Hey guys, thanks so much for visiting us here on our channel. Uh, to all our viewers out there, I'm Chris, this is Andrew, and today we've got a uh, guest with us that I am super excited about. He is a well-known um, radio DJ personality in the Pensacola, Florida area, and also the founder of the Uncharted Zone. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. Phil Thomas Cat here. Phil, thanks for being with us today. Well, I appreciate you guys asking me. This ought to be fun. <laughs> uh, no, we're super excited. So, um, man, the first thing, I, well, the first thing I want to tell our viewers is you have, it seems like, a fascinating uh, career and a lot of interesting things, and I wish that we could ask you questions about so many of them. And we don't have time, so I just want to encourage our viewers. We've got the link here on the screen. We'll have it in our, our uh, description. But if you just want to go to philthomascat.com, you can click the link to his bio and check all the stuff out there. Some really interesting things. But you have had, it seems, a really successful radio career. And a lot of the places you've gone, it seems you've had different time slots. You've had... Uh, different stations that you've been on, but it seems kind of no matter where you've been placed that you've been able to develop a pretty large listening audience at those different places and even have taken several shows that you've done to number one in your time slot. So I'm just kind of curious, what what do you attribute to that success? Like what have you stumbled upon that seems to work every place you've gone? Honestly, I think it's because I prefer to be kind to people that I associate with. Mm -hmm. You might call them fans. I generally call them friends. But I think kindness draws people in a lot more than, uh, you know, say the shock jocks and all that. Yeah, nonsense. yeah. So I know you are stationed in Pensacola. When you're out in Pensacola, do you get recognized for the Uncharted Zone or anything else you've done? Yeah, all the time. Oh, really? Awesome. Um, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it's never ending. Uh, you know, I've uh, people stop. I mean... The other night, I was in Denny's with a friend, and uh, I got home and discovered on Facebook was a picture of me through the window. Of oh, wow, wow. So, you... yeah, there's a lot of that, and there's been a lot of that, especially since uh, we started the Uncharted Zone, because mm -hmm. back in my early radio days, you know, we didn't have Facebook and the internet and all the wonderful mm -hmm. things like we do now, and so uh, people didn't know what you look like as that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like that? Is that annoying? Is that frustrating? How do you kind of feel going out and always being recognized? Honestly, I, I, I guess I've got to say I kind of like it. I enjoy yeah, yeah. the fame. Um, one thing I've always said was I got the fame but not the fortune. So. <laughs> <laughs> kind of looking through some of the stuff, you know, Andrew and myself, we are newer to kind of the uncharted zone. So a lot of the earlier parts of your story and that story, um, we weren't, you know, we weren't following at that time. So one of the things I got to ask about is I, I read that as a publicity stunt for your first album, you faked your own death in order to promote uh, the Nine Lives album. But that's all I know. I have no idea how you did that or... Um, how you went about coming back to life to promote it. So I've got to hear the short version of that story. Okay, well, basically, back in the 80s, I had an answering machine that just gained a huge following locally here in Pensacola. And uh, it was like the phone was never ending. It was continuously mm -hmm. ringing, mm -hmm. uh, too, so much to the point I had to get a second line in back then just to make personal calls. But... Uh, I decided with the popularity, that was unexpected, I might add, because I had worked in radio before, and then I got out of it, went in retail for a while, which I hated. And uh, yeah. then um, I started doing Catline, creative, silly, outrageous answer machine messages, mainly for a creative outlet. And so I thought, you know, this is pretty cool. I have a pretty good little following here. I ought to finish an album and release it because I'd recorded 45 RPMs through the years mm -hmm. and uh, I had a bunch of recordings already made just I needed like say three more so I went into the studio and decided to record the uh, album Nine Lives when I did that 
I thought it would be cool, considering the name of the album, to fake my death. And so I just had someone yeah. come in on Catline and say, Phil Thomas Cat has passed away and all that stuff. And uh, it was outrageous. I mean, there were hundreds of calls, condolences. And then that was a Friday <laughs> night. And then Saturday morning, I says, guess you forgot. Cats have nine lives. <laughs> you have nine lives, too. Go to the record store. And I sold a bunch of copies. Did you, uh, did you end up tricking like any of your family or close friends with that? Or is it just the, the fans of the answering machine? Well, I warned my family. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, I says, you know, I'll be dead tonight. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, as far as fans, no, I, I, a lot of those, I think, thought it were real. Yeah. And so, uh, I, I knew it was just going to be for one night, and I knew it was going to uh, cause some reactions. And so, I just yeah. thought that it might be a good way to sell the to sell the cassette. Yeah. Hmm. I never would have thought of that. That's yeah. really cool. <laughs> Uh, tell us about how you started the Uncharted Zone. Um, I know online from what I read that it started in 1994 on air, but I'd just love to know why you why you even started it or what did you want to do with it in the first place? Well, actually, it started before that. That's when, oh, okay. I, went, that's when I went to television with it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After Catline and my album, Nine Lives, sold so well for me locally, I thought... You know, I kind of want to help some of these other local artists around here achieve this success. Mm -hmm. And so I thought I would create something, a way to showcase their music as well. And I thought, call it the Uncharted Zone, because we're all uncharted artists around here. And so uh, I basically started it on Catline. It evolved into my radio shows through mm -hmm. the years. And then when radio got all corporate to the point where they didn't want to play local artists anymore, mm -hmm. I decided to quit and buy airtime on a local television station, and that's where the Uncharted Zone TV show started. But it all basically started simply because I just wanted to help out other local artists. Awesome. And how how has that kind of worked out for you, the way that that's developed? Because, you know, you started on TV. Uh, now, though, it has a pretty big presence on YouTube. So what did that transition kind of look like for you? Well, it was a surprise. I mean, I, I'd been doing the TV show for many years. And then uh, a friend of mine says, hey, you ought to check out YouTube. And so, you know, so they got TV screens on there. You can watch videos on the Internet. You know, all this mm -hmm. was new back then. And yeah. so I was excited about that. And I decided to just upload a few videos. Nowhere to the extent of what I'm doing these days. But I definitely uploaded uh, the newer stuff I had then. And... Uh, it just kind of skyrocketed, you know, just like a snowball rolling down a mountain. Mm -hmm. So how do you choose then which artists that you're going to feature on the Uncharted Zone? Well, for the most part, people contact me and they say, you know, we'd, I'd like to do a music video. I mean, even uh, Mark was that way. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, he just contacted me out of the blue, but most of the time, that's what happened. Now, in the early days of the TV show, we were trying to uh, promote the local music scene. So I was going out to the different music venues and shooting footage that way. But once I built the green screen set here, um, it just kind of changed. And uh, since then, people call. And that's mm -hmm. basically it. Do you get, now that it's on YouTube and pretty much anyone anywhere can see it, do you get people from outside Pensacola or like really far away asking you to be on the Uncharted Zone? Oh, yeah. In fact, um, we've had bands that were, you know, touring bands yeah. that were passing through the area, going from one gig to another, and wanted to stop by and shoot a video on our set while they were here in town or passing through. Oh, cool. And so I've had them from Detroit. I've had them from, you know, all over the place, actually. So now I know that you um, do a lot with the making of the music videos with these artists. Uh, is that something, I guess, the video work that – you've always done or something that you kind of taught yourself for this specific purpose or where did you kind of learn how to do all that? Well, it kind of started with audio production and, and cat line and recording my songs and things like that because in the old days, uh, video equipment was way out of my financial range. Yeah. So I, I didn't really do it. But by the time I went to the television show, 
I was um, renting time from an editor and kind of basically just watching him edit. And this was all analog editing, you know, with the razor blades and all the crazy mm -hmm. stuff like that. And uh, I just learned it from that. And then when nonlinear come around, I just evolved to that myself. But I've actually been working with my own video editing equipment since probably at least um, 2000, 2001. Mm -hmm. So then in that process, how much of that is kind of your input versus the artist's input when you're figuring out what a music video is going to look like and how it takes shape? Well, that's changed a lot through the years. In the old days, they'd come around and say, I want to do this. I'd like to be on the moon. I'd like to what, be at the Grand Ole Opry or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. Nowadays, the artist comes in and says, I just want you to do the PTK edit. And so mm. you know, that gives me a lot of freedom, and I actually prefer that because that way I'm not uh, stressed about trying to accomplish what they want. Mm -hmm. I just do mm -hmm. what I feel creatively fits the song. So, so then what kind of does that look like for your – your creative process, but also your inspiration. If an artist comes in and says, "Hey, we just we want you to run with that, run with this," how do you kind of start getting the wheels turning for figuring out how a video is going to shape out? Well, actually, it kind of varies. You know, sometimes I'll have an idea right up front. Sometimes they might even say one thing. You know, I'd like this to be playing on a mountain, and you know, <laughs> whatever the case may be. But uh, for the most part, I try to utilize the lyrics of the song and build something from that. Mm -hmm. Now, occasionally I'll have a storyline, like I did say with uh, Me Without You video, where mm -hmm. I had the flying saucer abduct the, uh, the band and suck them up into the UFO. And I tried to build that as a storyline, but occasionally I just have things where they switch from different location mm -hmm. to location performing. So it, it just kind of varies according to how the song moves me. I was just thinking this. I would love to know your personal thoughts on like music videos, you know, nowadays, you know, you know, the big artist music videos or where music is now, just as someone who works in music. Well, you know, I, I like the stuff today. I know there's mm -hmm. a lot of people, uh, up in my age range that maybe say, you know, I don't like the, uh, the techno or I don't like this, uh -huh. but I honestly like anything that moves me. I mean, it can be country, rock, gospel. It doesn't really matter. If I, if I dig the song, then, um, I like it. And it's the same way with the national artists. There's a lot of national artists that I that I like nowadays, young ones, older ones, and, um, mm -hmm. from various genres. Who, who's an example of someone that's really big right now that you really enjoy their music? Well, let me think who's big right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I do live in my own little world. But, uh, yeah. I've liked, um, see, you, you put me on the spot here. But, um, <laughs> hey, hey, I, yeah, <laughs> I, get, I get like that all the yeah. time, yeah. I like, um, I like a lot of the, uh, I'm trying to think of a, a particular artist. Do you... Like, what particular genre do you usually listen to? Like, are you more of a country or rock guy? or I I don't like genres. Oh, okay, I, yeah. I, I, like, I like music. That was part of my problem working in corporate radio. Mm. They were all genre-related. Mm. You know, you play just country or just rock. But me, I might want to hear some Nirvana and then some Doris Day. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's to me, it's, it's just if it's music and I dig it. Yeah. Uh, okay, one more question about the video stuff, and then we'll we'll talk about something different. Um, do you have like one specific video that you've created that you were like, man, I'm proud of all the ones I've done, but that one is my most favorite. Usually, it's my latest. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but um, if I if I had to pick one right now that I do like a lot. I'm going to probably have to say um, Me Without You, Watermelon Ascot. Okay. Awesome. Well, speaking of the latest videos, Mark just came out with a new video. Uh, yeah. I know you mentioned earlier that... Which we loved, by the way. Yeah. is a little bit of a different feel than some of yeah. his other stuff. We really liked it. 
Yeah, but I know you mentioned that Mark called you up wanting to be on the Uncharted Zone, but I would just love to know from your own opinion, why do you think Mark's videos have taken off the way they have? Well, I think there's three reasons people make it in show business. Okay. One of three reasons. You're either the first, you're the best, and both of those are kind of hard to accomplish. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, unique. And I think Mark was very unique with his vocal styles mm -hmm. and the fact that his songs were so deep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True story. We were playing it in the office one day and someone we work with walked by, didn't know who Mark was, just heard the music. And they were just like naming these famous bands like, oh, is that like Led Zeppelin? Is that well, like... Okay, so I'm curious about this. So Mark is someone that doesn't, you know, he, he's more... Uh, to himself and it's not like the interview the you know the whole show kind of thing so really the only picture that we get of him is from his music videos so what is mark like in person he's a good guy very generous very kind and uh i like him a lot as a person he's a little unusual maybe even you could say socially awkward because he's kind of shy mm-hmm but he's got a good heart. Yeah. See, that's what I figured because when you watch his videos, he does come across as just a very genuine person. And I, I love that. Um, what is your favorite Mark Gormley project that you've worked on with him? You know, probably it's the one that we did for Frito Lay, the, uh, sing me your song thing where uh there were cheetos on the moon <laughs> and mm -hmm. it was like a product placement deal but i thought the video was really really cool and i liked the song a lot as well mm -hmm. but you know it's hard to say because yeah. I, I actually like all of his songs yeah i don't think i'm familiar with that one well frito lay well their people contacted yeah. us mm -hmm. and it's an ad agency and uh they wanted to put cheetos in a mark gormley video as a product placement deal for the Uncharted Zone. Okay. And basically that's what we did. And uh, we just, it was more or less just Mark doing a song with some Cheetos hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I know in the, pre in the latest Mark Gormley video, you mentioned that Mark only shoots for a short period of time in the video process. What's it like shooting a video with Mark? Like how does the process work out? Well, as far as the video, and I think what you're referring to is, is our audio sessions, which yeah. were about 20, 20 minutes whenever he would come. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, shooting a music video, especially the style that I do with Mark, that generally only takes about 20 to 30 oh, okay. minutes any artist. Mm -hmm. But as far as Mark recording, he'll come in, he'll work for 20 minutes, and he's ready to go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I prefer when I'm recording to work on something for hours until mm. I feel comfortable with it. Mark works until he's ready and then he's gone and then he'll come back and take up from there next time. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular like moment working with Mark or a particular story of working with Mark that sticks out to you? Like your favorite Mark Gormley story? Well, you know, I, I, don't, I don't guess so. In, in some respects, it's... Um, especially in the earlier days, it was pretty standard, just like any artist. When mm -hmm. I work with an artist, they come by, we work, we, we put together a music video, and I release it. But as far as a moment that stands out, I guess um, the only thing I could basically say was when he first went viral on our, on our channel, mm -hmm. all of the offers and stuff that started happening. I kind of remember those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was kind of yeah. Cool. yeah, I think – uh, in one of the videos, you said he you even got reached out to by Jimmy Kimmel for him to come on the show. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Oh, there's been others too, so yeah. Wow. Uh, well, last Mark Gormley question. I know that you guys just, I mean only about a month ago, released um, a brand new Mark Gormley video. But still got to ask, any more Mark Gormley projects in the works for the future? Well, for the past two or three years, I've been working on three songs for Mark, mm -hmm. including together the one that we just mm -hmm. released. So we have another one called The Stay Song, which originally was going to be the first release over together, but we just 
couldn't get it just the way you know we wanted it and so we decided to do it to get go ahead and put together out but we have together we have the stay song and one other one that's just uh, no real title at this point i'm guessing you're pretty excited about the potential for all of those so far well yeah yeah just like yeah. i am with any artist yeah. i mean i i I appreciate Mark as an artist, but I also appreciate Michael McCartan as an artist, Ken Manning as an artist, many yeah. of the people that yeah. are on our channel. Are there any new acts or performers on the Uncharted Zone that you think we should look out for? Well, I, uh, I wouldn't always call it new, mm. but uh, there's, there's definitely some artists on there that I think you should, uh, you should look at if you haven't. I think uh, Lauren Kay, for instance, she's a local songwriter here, fantastic. And uh, I did a little video for her a couple of years ago that I'm real proud of. A guy named Michael McCartan, I'm working with him. And uh, we've done several videos, and I, I think he's a great artist. Mm -hmm. And another artist that I think is just fantastic is Ken Manning. He hasn't, he hasn't done anything for many years. But um, during the times he was active, we must have did, I guess, mm -hmm. seven, eight, nine videos. I'm not sure exactly, but there was a bunch of them. And for the most part, other than quality issues, because, you know, that's improved through the years, mm -hmm. <laughs> starting out with VHS and, you know, moving up to HD, um, I think his videos are very creative. Tell us a little bit about what you are doing right now besides the Uncharted Zone. Well, that's about it, that and the uh, radio show. Yeah, so tell, tell us a little bit about that, the radio show you've got going on right now. Well, the radio show is an uh, internet radio station, and uh, I was just offered a, a shift on it, so I, I took it because I had been out of radio for a few years, mm -hmm. mainly just doing UZ. And, man, I loved it again. It was, it was, in fact, I liked it better than ever working for the uh, corporate corporations mm -hmm. because, first off, we didn't have commercials. Secondly, I didn't have a boss over there saying, hey, play this. And um, so I really enjoy doing my radio show. And another thing I'm enjoying about it is my friend Tommy Robinetti is coming by, and we're working together again on the radio show itself. And so that's exciting to me, too, because he's been kind of out of the business for a while for some mm. health reasons. Yeah. Mm. So uh, when are you live on that radio show? If our viewers want to check it out, when should they tune in and where should they tune in? It's a uh, live 10 p.m. till midnight central time. And it's also on demand at RadioFreePensacola.com. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, and final question for you. Um, what can we expect in the future from Phil Thomas Cat? Anything on your radar right now? Well, yeah, actually there is. I'm, today I'm working on a, uh, I guess you could call it a uh, talent uh uh, search maybe oh, okay. uh, what it okay. is I have a song called Telemet that I wrote many years ago and similar to what I did in my video just for kissing I solicited the uh, world to send me kisses mm -hmm. <laughs> the internet yeah so I made a montage of those with the, that particular song in this case I'm looking for a girl to play Annette in the video the basic star of the song and so I'm just putting out a, I guess you could call it a plea. Yeah. You know, I'm looking for a net. And I'm hoping that it'll go as well as the uh, Just for Kissing thing did, and mm -hmm. I get a lot of auditions on that. So I'm excited about it. The song also is very unusual and, and unique, and I think it's uh, one of the coolest things I've done. When do you think that'll be released? Well, um, within the next few weeks, I'll be releasing the video looking for the uh, looking for a net. Okay. Then I'm just going to play that by ear as to how the uh, the auditions come in. But I have several other videos in the can shot already that I'm going to release as I can get to them as well. So, you know, I've got probably five. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, we'll be looking forward to checking that out. We're super excited about it. And again, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for chatting with us, Phil. Well, I appreciate it, and I enjoyed meeting you guys. All yeah. right. Well, thank you. Hey, you enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Have a cool day, guys. All right. You too.